Okay, now we're going to talk about the Scribe Connector architecture. Um, we're going to talk about the architecture of Scribe Online, the platform, versus Scribe Online connectors and the uh, agents that use those connectors. Uh, so let's dive right in. Uh, I'm going to show you an architecture overview. We're going to take a look visually at what, uh, what Scribe Online looks like. Uh, we're going to talk about where the platform starts and stops and where your connector starts and stops. Uh, we're going to talk about how your connectors make connections, uh, the metadata, queries and filters, and operations that your connectors need to support. Um, here we see that uh, the Scribe Online uh, platform is hosted in this cloud by Scribe. Um, we have the concept of the application itself and the Scribe Online agent, which is the, uh, the method by which connectors uh, talk to the platform and uh, connect to your source and target databases. Uh, here we have the Scribe Online agent hosted in the cloud again so that your customer does not have to have any uh, hardware on site and nothing running on site in order to have a Scribe solution uh, in place for integrating data between cloud applications. If your customer has data behind a firewall, uh, you can install a Scribe Online agent behind the firewall, uh, and that Scribe Online agent will then use the connectors to talk to uh, online or on premise databases and uh, cloud databases. So um, uh, the Scribe Online agent will take its uh, instructions from the Scribe Online application. Uh, so that's a quick overview visually. Um, Scribe Online is accessed through a browser. It can be Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, as long as it uh, can support the Microsoft Silverlight plugin. Um, so uh, it can be accessed from anywhere. So once your agents are set up and your connections to all of your applications that you want to get data in and out of are, are put together, uh, a developer, a consultant, an uh, integration professional can access the Scribe Online maps and manage those maps and manage the timing, et cetera, uh, from any browser uh, from anywhere. Uh, the on-premise agent the, uh, that you host behind your firewall, if you need to get the data behind your firewall, uh, is a, a Windows service. Uh, it requires Windows 2008 or newer. Um, .NET 4.0, it is about a 20 megabit download, download uh, so it's a very small footprint. Um, and it is secured with a, a unique identifier. That unique identifier ensures that that particular agent uh, can only talk to a particular organization within the, uh, the Scribe Online platform so that uh, someone else with an agent cannot spoof your Scribe Online organization within the cloud. Um, Within the agent directory, uh, as you install the on-premise agent, you'll see a series of connectors show up in a connector directory. Those connectors um, uh, reside within the agent directory. Um, so if you go into the marketplace and you click on a new collect connector to install, you see a connector to a database that you want, uh, it'll take a few minutes to download and then it'll be available to that agent as a connection. Uh, <clears throat> what does Scribe Online application do? Where does it start and stop? Uh, the application itself hosts the UI that you see while you're in the, uh, uh, on the website. Uh, it stores the data uh, of the maps uh, that you create. So uh, the, the field definitions, the, the transformations, the formulas that you create, uh, that's all stored within the, the Scribe Online platform. Uh, metadata for those connectors, so as you connect to a new connection, say uh, to a CRM system, uh, CRM Online, or Salesforce, uh, metadata for your Salesforce uh, organization will get stored online. So if you've got customizations, etc., they'll be stored and available so that the next time a connection is made, it doesn't have to pull down all that metadata. Um, anytime metadata does change, uh, customizations are made, that metadata uh, can get refreshed manually or it does get refreshed periodically within the platform. Um, scheduling information, how often you want these maps to run, that gets uh, uh, stored in the application. And, uh, and the application, obviously, it processes the maps. It takes care of calculating uh, what field goes where, uh, what the uh, transformation of that data uh, within your formulas. Um, the Scribe Online agent 
uh, manages the connectors. It, t it tells the Scribe Online platform what connectors are available to a particular agent that you have installed. So you have cloud agents, you may have multiple agents behind multiple firewalls, but each of those agents may not have access to uh, all of the connectors in your, in your environment. Um, and the Scribe Online agent uh, manages the connection and disconnecting uh, to your data systems. Now, the connector itself uh, uh, doesn't have to worry about a whole lot. Uh, it describes the connection UI. So the URI that your uh, interface is connecting to, whether it's SOAP, REST, or uh, an application interface uh, that is uh, proprietary, um, the UI needs to have that connection information, username, password. So five or six fields at the most uh, you have to describe within your connector. Um, the connector, obviously, it makes the connection. So when the platform says, hey, I need a connection to this location, your connector takes that information and says, oh, here's the connection object. Uh, your connector needs to describe that metadata that this platform is using to create those maps. Uh, your connector uh, needs to describe the relationships within that metadata, and your connector needs to perform the CRUD operations as directed by the Scribe platform. So the platform will, will do some transformations, it'll do some calculations, and it'll come to your connector and it'll say, hey, here's a chunk of data, update it. Here's a chunk of data, absurd it, uh, etc. Um, your connector does not have to process the maps. Your connector does not have to know anything about data transformation. Your connector does not have to know anything uh, about uh, 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 connections to source and target and last run dates. None of that information is really pertinent to your connector. So your connector can be very simple uh, and we can roll this out very quickly uh, if done correctly. Um, here, we're going to talk about the connection methods. Uh, this diagram you'll find in the connector development kit uh, that you uh, can access through the URL that we saw in the introduction segment. Um, so you'll be able to take a look at this within the CDK. Um, uh, for a connection, you need to do a pre-connect, a connect is connected, and a disconnect. Uh, in your pre-connect code, this is where you're going to define the fields that the user needs to fill out in order to make that connection. Username, password, URI, etc. Whatever uh, information is necessary to make that connection to the application that you're creating your connector for. Um, uh, that pre-connect information is then displayed uh, back to the user in the connection manager within the Scribe platform. So that little box that pops up will populate with the fields that you define in your pre-connect code. Uh, the connect code uh, needs to do a te test connection and it needs to pass back to the Scribe Online platform. Yes, I made a connection, we're connected. Um, and it also needs to uh, create that connection object and pass it back for the platform to use. Uh, disconnect code, self-explanatory. When we ask for disconnect, we uh, release our, our uh, hold on that application. And there's an is connected boolean that uh, needs to be filled out so that we know whether or not the connection is still active. And here we have a series of methods uh, for the metadata. Um, for metadata, uh, you're going to uh, access uh, this area of the, of the, uh, the graph uh, to generate the metadata, populate the, uh, the, the properties of that metadata, and, <coughs> and to uh, uh, refresh that metadata. Uh, here's some sample code. It's a, uh, the, this is the object definition of an entity. This is what you'll be creating with your metadata for objects. Uh, you'll be defining the object, the relationships, the properties, and the supported actions of that object so that not all of your entities need to support all of the CRUD operations. If you're creating a read-only connector, uh, you do not have to support create, update, and delete. Uh, so here is that uh, list object, uh, name, full name, description, hidden, uh, and uh, relationship definitions, property definitions, and supported actions are all list items within uh, the object definition. Uh, so those list objects, uh, we'll show you an example here. Uh, uh, here are the properties. So this is going to be your field properties. Uh, it defines the name type, uh, what it's used for, is it the primary key, is it nullable, um, and 
whether or not it's used in uh, queries and lookups, uh, whether it can be used as a constraint on a query. These used in properties are uh, very important later on when we talk about uh, lookups and uh, updates. Uh, so supporting lookups and updates and supporting queries. Um, typically, I leave all of these on when I create a connector. Um, I like to leave everything open so that the user can filter on any object that they like uh, unless there's a reason that that object cannot be used as a query constraint or cannot be used as an action input. Okay. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is the execute query. Um, when an execute query is thrown down to you, uh, your uh, code, uh, your connector will be given uh, an execute query command. Um, uh, whether or not that execute query command comes based on a particular object is based on the metadata, whether or not that uh, object is uh, uh, listed as supported by that action, uh, and whether or not it's used in. So, so when that execute query comes down, filtering information, lookup information uh, uh, will come down with it. Uh, you need to support uh, the, the used in queries, used in filter constraints, etc. Uh, for the filter grid to populate in the UI. So when a user selects uh, an entity as a source, the UI down below has a list of objects, uh, a list of fields that are usable in a filter, uh, and that's what the execute query um, is required for. You also need to fill in those used in properties to support the last run date feature so that the uh, the user doesn't have to know anything about the data and can only uh, or can choose only to use uh, source data that has uh, uh, been changed since the last time this particular map was run. So, so uh, paying attention to the used in query constraint, etc. Uh, when you're uh, working with uh, your property list, um, is important for for uh, the execute query. Um, again, this is why I like to leave everything open. Use everything everywhere unless there's a reason that you don't want uh, your customers querying on a particular entity. Uh, now uh, we get into the CRUD operations. There are four major operations uh, that uh, we need to support here. Uh, create, update, upsert, and delete. Um, uh, Again, your, your connector code will be given an execute operation command. The execute operation code within your connector code uh, will determine whether or not that's a create, update, upsert, or delete. Uh, you'll be given a block of data to do the create with. Um, and uh, what you'll do is, is your connector will take that information, do the uh, operation that was assigned to it, and bring back the results. Um, and that's, and that's pretty much it. Your connector does not have to do much more than that. Um, so we've gone over an architecture summary. We've discussed the role of the platform versus the role of the connectors. Um, we've discussed that the connector needs to deal with connections, metadata, querying and filtering, and operations. Uh, so your connector code is going to be very simple, uh, especially after we get through uh, this series of classes. Thank you.